I'll say I told Pete about this literally minutes after it happened, and <laughs> in his support and friendship manner, pissed himself laughing at me. <laughs> the right, amount so of people, right? If you're driving, pull over because you might crash. <laughs> <laughs> Hello and welcome to the UK Surf Show. We are your hosts, I'm Pete. And I'm Mitch. And on today's episode... It's me and you. You us, and me. It's just us. <laughs> We're doing something... I don't know if me and you have actually done this. I know you... I think we have, we have, but we've, uh, we've done like... We've done ones talking about Nuki and about Scott. I think we did one whiplash ages ago, which was when I got whiplash from surfing, funny enough. Hence the that name of the episode. That, that was you and Leighton. No, it was you and me, I'm sure of it. Was it? I that think it was you Leighton, but that might have been. yeah. Anyway, so so that's what we're doing. We thought we'd just bring you a catch up and uh, of I guess what we've been up to because I don't know. I actually don't know why people would even seem interested in what we have been up to. We should say but, before that that we um, said that all the rest of them were being filmed. Uh, yeah, we lied. This one's not filmed. Yeah, this is just and you and me true. talking. But you should know that by what we say about surfing, we know nothing about yeah. surfing. We know nothing about life or what we're saying. So, you know. Or or we know loads and we'll just try to keep you on your toes. Yeah. <laughs> Unlikely. <laughs> Unlikely. Yeah. I think we could all yeah. agree. <laughs> no. Or we've both just been super busy and we haven't had time to, so we're just recording we're this one to get it out busy, there. Actually, that's a really good place to maybe start. Why have the... you been super busy? Well, no, no, we'll, we'll come back to that. But there's another point where we're talking about the listeners, because um, I have been all over the shop, uh, and I don't mean mentally, that because that's an ongoing thing. <laughs> I just mean <laughs> physically. I've been all over the shop, and uh, I have the amount of people that have come up to me and been like, "Oh, you're the guy from the podcast," and I'm genuinely, I'm always, it's the locations I think that surprise me. Yeah, I guess I'm surprised that people from the area I live or I come from or even just anywhere in Scotland, I'm surprised that they listen to us yeah. <laughs> rambling on. Yeah. And I've had so many people, so we'll come to the location shortly, but I've been to Ty the Isle of Tyree. Today I've been at Pease. And honestly, I'm kind of like, this old is Kent mental. Road. Like people actually listen to us. The old Kent Road, yeah. That will become <laughs> apparent soon. Um, it's just really cool. So I love that people are also um comfortable enough to come up and be like oh my god you're that bell end that talks shit all the time yeah <laughs> um, yeah it's, but it's like, great. That's it's like I they like actually it. know you now as well <laughs> mm. so yeah. it's, it was class it's just it's nice to nice to hear back from the listeners and get feedback and stuff but i've had it so much i mean it's yeah. awesome thank yeah. you no it's good it's good it's it's uh it's uh, one of those really nice things where people say oh i really like what you did i like messages we've had some really nice messages on the on the instagram lately that, um, <laughs> <I don't>. yeah <laughs> that have been like just really nice and people saying like oh, i really love the show and like been listening for a while mm. been listening for ages and well i suppose that's a good little link into been listening for ages um echo surf which i went down to in viewed a while back they had a showcasing on where yeah. they were showing like all eco products throughout the surfing world and everything like that they have offered listeners of our show a 10 percent discount off uh leashes and fins so if you go nice. to echosurf.co.uk um and use the discount code uk surf show 2023 uh all uppercase and that will get you 10% off anything you order from Echo Surf. I did have to ask if it was Eco or Echo, but you said Echo as in Echo the Dolphin, that great 1990s computer game that was on the Sega Mega Drive. I had a Mega Drive. I don't remember the game. Ah, oh, no, it was a great game. Um, but yeah, no, they they're, all their stuff, you know, they may aim to make like shapers and surfers find the most sustainable surf gear in the UK. And yeah, it's just really good what they're doing and the way they're bringing people together throughout the surfing community with sustainable mm. products you know if if you can make surfing more sustainable why wouldn't you i know there's loads of other things out there as well that um we have been asked to talk about and will talk about at a later point but yeah no i think it's great i think you know you you live in an unrealistic world and have an unrealistic set of expectations if you think everything in your life can be sustainable and recycled and stuff there's got to be a point where you realize that, okay that's too much but if you don't start somewhere and starting somewhere has got to be the key just yeah. a little bit of change in your lifestyle like, i was surfing today with a guy and he's made he made his own board in fact his board if i remember right was 
so it was it was a, a recycled damaged for me and then i don't know the ins and outs of what he's done to it but essentially he's then re upcycled it covered it in wood and used like cork rails and stuff so everything else is sustainable within it but the yeah. recycling of something that probably would have had no other purpose yeah. it's just nice to see so i mean the point i'm getting at is just you know start somewhere and it all adds up and makes yeah. a change yeah yeah but yeah so so um what have, what have you been doing you've been surfing anywhere <laughs> oh my god have i <laughs> been surfing I mean, everywhere haven't you i have actually and it's weird because i've not i don't feel like i've surfed loads but i've just surfed everywhere <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> like I, I mean i don't know how far we go back but I, i've been man when did i go i went i got invited back to army surfing now that i've left uh and i think they're trying to vote me in as an honorary member for life which would be <laughs> absolutely epic um uh, so i was down in new key well, this must have been a month ago now but it was fully like at the time four mil no boots no gloves no hood yeah it was super warm and i think we've spoke about this i won't go into that too much but then i today i surfed today it was 20 degrees man and i still needed my hood boots and gloves you know was that like, up is... in peace yeah up in peace bay yeah yeah um i just like to be fair at the end of the session i did uh, my second session sorry i ditched the hood but i think partly because i've been in the water for so long already yeah i kind of got acclimatized to it and i ditched the gloves but it's just it's just so different like you lot down there in the south of france <laughs> Cornwall, <laughs> like, the water oh my god but i know it's relative so if you live there like it might maybe not now but still feeling cold because i've seen mates posting on instagram or whatever being like oh man three two weather now and i'm like three two there's yeah, still people see, up here rocking six mils like when i was up in february and we went right up to the up near near top of scotland up that way yeah. well not well, up top but you know up, but yeah. you know that it's still a good few, just, three just, hours yeah. um even there, I didn't find the water was that the water wasn't that cold in february there i thought oh it's all right so maybe maybe you just get that um warmer weather goes a bit later you know yeah but you you didn't spend your time surfing when you were underwater you were just floating about i don't think you even got wet <laughs> oh, never really ah, ended this am i yeah that's no. it, that's it. Don't but worry yeah about so it. It, it's gonna change it's gonna change quickly like the water's definitely getting warmer up here um yeah but yeah it's been it's howling so yeah so speaking of surfing to... are we gonna get any footage of you surfing because there's a hell of a lot of footage on your instagram of you standing outside the surf i need to i need to see that gopro on it and you were getting in What's it really funny is that someone literally commented yesterday on one of my posts going bro when do we get to see you surfing because i've got all these <laughs> i've got all these clips right amazing b-roll and stuff amazing build up and obviously i'm filming it yeah and so i replied going mate when someone holds a camera that's when i'll have that footage but you, you'll be disappointed but that's when i'll have that footage and he was like oh yeah fair point yeah that's <laughs> it. it's always me with a camera like I, that's why i don't like filmmaking because yeah. i want to be in it i don't yeah. you know i know we've, so we've, we have spoke about that before like it's that difficult thing of like if you're trying to film stuff or anything for like any of the social media stuff or you know, youtube stuff and then it's like comes to when you're going surfing it's like oh i can't be bothered i just want to go surfing now i can't be bothered to film anything and like even if you take the gopro in the water you know we've said about before and it's just an extra hassle it's just mm. something else to annoy you for the day when you're surfing isn't it well the thing is i've kind of got used to now not having my gopro on the yeah. boat because before i used to always have it for instagram content and whatever yeah um, and to be honest it's quite refreshing not having it but the thing is as well even if i knew i was going to get good if if i knew i was going to surf well if that's even possible um it kind of gets a bit one dimensional when you're you know when it's a gopro just on a board facing you yeah it kind of becomes i've seen it a hundred times like there's nothing new or different about it so i don't like relying on that too much so um, uh but, what you're saying if there's any cameraman out there that just want to follow you around for a bit and, uh... yeah totally but, but, <laughs> but, be amazing, but don't don't ruin your day hoping i'm gonna catch a wave because <laughs> <laughs> that's so, the thing um, it? that happens i think more more than uh more than nuki though i think people are more, more interested to hear about the uh the land of the log oh man yeah so it's kind of a last minute gig actually so um, should, should we actually should go before that to how how that came about so what have you uh what's happened recently in your work life um, uh, well obviously i i was medically removed from the army yes <laughs> medically kicked out see you later goodbye and um 
I've kind of known for a long time I've had loosely a, a job or a role within within a brand or a business. Um, but the timelines kind of married up to the time I had left in the army. Yeah. So my, when I should have left the army would have been um, a year in January, a year this coming January. Yeah. Um, and that kind of tied into when this place was roughly going to be open i think you can say the name of it now mate i'm trying to build it up <laughs> um i'm trying to build it up you've ruined I, it i didn't know if you still wanted to keep it a secret <laughs> no, no, no 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 but so i've kind of i've known uh, we had a chat before that there's hopefully something there for me yep and then this 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 you know army's pulled the rug from under my feet <clears throat> and suddenly i'm in this position at home and i'm like oh my god what do i do but obviously special k was going through chemo and all that stuff so the you kind of that was great that was the one great thing it was that i was able to spend the time with her but then literally the week after or not the week after days two days after um her last treatment i got invited to lost shore to a marketing yeah. meeting and uh, lost shore surf resort in Rathall, uh edinburgh and yeah i'm now working there as a social media dude um, uh... and it's been it's actually been a blast but l honestly you couldn't make up the timings like this was yeah. always my dream role and within a place like that, like to be in the surf industry, like so immersed um, and bringing, I guess, the black book contacts that I've, I've kind of grown myself through my own social media and stuff. And just, I guess, I, not a unique insight, but, you know, I've kind of gone about things my own way and I've learned stuff along the way. Um, yeah. So it's great to be involved in that way and to be listened to. And what's funny in that is that this week, in fact, yesterday when I was at work, it is the first day I've actually felt like a civvy again. Yeah. Because I've just I've just felt like I've been on leave. Like I've not felt yeah, like I'm yeah, out of the no, army no, yet. Mean, yeah. And I've been wondering when that day was going to kick in. And I'll tell you what it was that made me realize it yesterday, that I was no longer in the army. And it wasn't the facial hair. It was none of that stuff. It was the, we had quite a few meetings yesterday. And we we're just talking about, you know, social media planning and stuff like that. Yeah. And that was actually really fun. Like, it was really fun going through all that process and coming up with captions and whatever. And I remember I was just chatting. I was giving my opinion on something. And this is what happens in the army, right? See, even if you're the subject matter expert on something specific, right? And yeah. you're talking about it and you're giving your in-depth analysis, or even if you're talking shit, what yeah. will happen is at some point, somebody that you're talking to will just stare down and look at your chest to see what rank slide you're wearing. And essentially what they're doing within that is deciding whether, nah, their rank's not big enough for me to believe what they're saying, which is a, is a problem. Like yeah. rank is really important structure, especially within what we ask soldiers to do. But at the same time, it brings problems. Yeah. And if you're basing somebody's opinion on the rank they wear on their chest, that's yeah. wrong because you don't know what how people see the world. You don't know their experience, you don't know the experience the background. yeah. You yeah. don't know any of that. And, and age doesn't even come into that as a factor. Being older than yeah. somebody doesn't mean you know better. And all it does really in the army, and I used to say this to like my OCs, officer commandants, the people sort of in charge of subunits all the time, like you you don't know better. The only thing you, you do is you own the risk. Your rank means you own the risk. It doesn't mean you know yeah. better. And honestly, it's a huge problem. Like, And that's what happens. So I, I've kind of been waiting for that to happen and at no yeah. point is anybody really questioning you in that way at all. And yesterday was kind of a big day like that. And it was almost like people are appreciating that you have something to say that yeah. might sound credible or not. I don't know. Um, but yeah, that's when I kind of, it was a realization moment yesterday. I was like, oh, this is actually happening. <laughs> yeah. I'm a human again. Like I'm a, yeah. I'm a real boy. <laughs> yeah. It's like, yeah. <laughs> you know? like Pinocchio. I told you, if you want to be treated normally, just wear that bag on your head and you'll be fine. No one will look at you and judge you then. It's fine. Yeah, totally, totally. <laughs> so, so then from great, that, mate. from that, from getting a job at Lost Shore, which is congratulations, by the way. Thank um, you. I also noticed something else that happened in your life because I've noticed you've changed your name on our chat to Mitch Blue Tick. <laughs> <laughs> Blue Tack. <laughs> it's really made me laugh as well. And um, well, I, I, I tried to change it to Mitch now has a blue tick in brackets, but it said it was too long. <laughs> yeah. When I opened up this chat. For people but, that don't know, the thing we record on, we have to put our names in, so that's what I put. <laughs> yeah. So, um, and then that, your job at, um, uh, your job at Lost Shore has then uh, led to a trip to Tyree, to the land of, uh, the Larg family. 
it, it did, and you know, you've obviously skipped. You you brought it up and then skipped oh, no, I, straight I, I off just, from it. I'm skipping backwards and forwards and everywhere, mate. You are, you know. Yeah, the the, the blue tick finally happened. I kind of periodically, every like eight months or so, will apply for a blue tick on Instagram. Yeah, and every eight months or so, I periodically get told to fuck off. <laughs> 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 no chance. Who are you? Yeah. Um, but finally, finally got accepted, and one of the the, the beautiful things I've realized out of it, in fact, the, probably the best thing that's come out of it, because I have spent a lot of time sending some shitty messages to the support group <laughs> yeah. at, at Meta and Instagram, but based on real things to say, like we talk about engagement, right? Like I think pre-COVID, most people's engagement would have been around 5, 10 to 15% of the people that follow them. That's yeah. what you should expect. So in terms of likes, even though likes now aren't really a thing, but yeah. that's what I would expect now it's around 1% and at times 0.1%. So yeah. I'm like, I'm constantly sending like Instagram these messages going, look, 20,000 followers. How have 200 people seen this, this, this story? That's that you can't even make it up. Yeah. Um, so now that I've got, finally got verification, I've realized what that allows you to do is you have direct access to a human at yeah. Instagram. Whereas you don't before, it's just a bot. You don't actually get to have a conversation. You're so, going to be the first person that gets a blue tick taken off of them within probably, a month for, for abusive morning, messages. For, for morning. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, and I was, I was kind of just going through. I was like, why has this never happened before? And they said, like, well, you don't engage with your audience. And I went, what do you mean? They said, well, we want you to be replying to every comment. I'm like, I do that. Special K told me off because I actually last year when i realized that was actually quite important i went back to my first ever post and spent a whole morning replying to comments from like five six years ago and because she's <laughs> tagged she's tagged in the post she gets a notification to say somebody's commenting somebody's commenting and she's just what, doing your lunatic <laughs> yeah she's just seeing me every two seconds going firing comments of responses going, what are you what are you stop it <laughs> so yeah i've used my i've used my blue tick wisely and had a moan at yeah. instagram so so that happened that's been great and then, yeah, I had a, a, an invite up to Tyree, um, where the Larg family hail from. If you don't know who that is, that's Ben Larg, Red Bull yep. Surfer. Um, that is Robin Larg, his charging little sister. Um, that is Marty, brother of Sam, Cheese Toasty Shack Sam. The, honestly, they're like the biggest family <laughs> ever yeah. in the old surf. We spoke about them a lot. So, yeah, I've been wanting to go up there for such a long time. And uh, Tyree is in the... In our Hebrides, yeah, I'm waiting for somebody to correct me. <laughs> I gave yeah. the pause so somebody can correct yeah. me, but I'm confident. Some outer, outer inner, outer, whatever, it's, 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 it's some inner, Hebridean. It's, inner Hebrides. it's yeah. inner Hebrides, right? There's literally nothing there. 650 people on the island. And although you get 5G, which is odd. Like I live in a, near a city and I barely get 5G. Yeah. Um, hardly end of day, stunning, stunning beaches, like gold sand and the clearest, clearest water. Apart from the 20 meters of kelp, like 20 meters deep, and I actually thought I was going to get held under it when I was wiping out, I was genuinely concerned. I wasn't going to be able to punch back through it on the way up. It was brutal. <laughs> is it was on the first day. Yeah. But yeah, so we, we went up there and I've wanted to go up for ages and kind of got an invite up. Somebody was driving up a few mates. In fact, you might have seen it. The guys that I went up with um rewrote the uh theme tune or not yeah. rewrote they've done a rendition of the theme tune of the podcast which i just i still blown away by that i thought it was yeah. amazing that's amazing <laughs> Le Leighton so sent me a message saying how does it feel to ha hear someone playing something mm. that you wrote and i was like yeah it's pretty weird actually it's 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 really like i was just like i've not thought of that actually fair point yeah no i was just like it's um I don't like I don't know how to explain it. It was just like it was a feeling of like sort of ah oh. <laughs> oh, cheers. Like, was that good? You know? was it, that's like yeah, a, yeah. It was like uh, a, it, so it wasn't like a oh they've done it better than I did. No, no, no. It was no. more like, it's, a, it's a, like a compliment. It was like, as soon as I like as soon as I started hearing it, right? This is how my mind works. So I was like I, I, like started you because you sent me it on a video and you were like oh check this out. And it started and I was like. I can recognize this jesus christ yeah. it is oh wow like and i was like showing i was showing jude and stuff and i was like it's amazing like like and then i was thinking then the violin came in and i was like ah oh, i need to put a violin on the tune on the on yeah, the totally. theme tune now and then the banjo and i was like 
I like the banjo as well. And then I was imagining it like with a cajon or a like or like a bass drum and a bass line and like a whole like musical thing coming out of it. So um at some point in the future that will be re recorded and the new theme totally. tune would be what they did to it, plus other stuff that's now in my head that I wanna add into it as well. Oh nice. And then yeah. me singing it. <laughs> me killing it. Well, it was funny when we tried because we, we surfed all day, right? <laughs> <laughs> Where's my tumbleweed effect? <laughs> and we had the idea to do this. And we had that idea a few days before, to be fair. Yeah. And um, we've all have a barbecue and we can do that, right? And we're overlooking this just insanely stunning beach. And it was it was massive. It was firing, but it was really dumb pace. It wasn't really surfable. Yeah. But you can see it in the backdrop, actually, yeah. in the video. But um I, where I wanted them to sit because the fire was on right behind us I kind of wanted them at the other side of the wall because I didn't think you'd be able to see the beach properly because it's so far away and we were so high up yeah. and I wanted the smoke between the camera and them sitting playing yeah. but the wind was blowing the smoke straight at them <laughs> so we tried it and they were just sitting like <laughs> coughing he's getting smoked out so it didn't work but <laughs> I think it sounded amazing. And for them that hasn't seen it, you definitely check it out on our socials. And yeah. it is, it's a rendition from a, a banjo, a guitar, and a violin, uh, yeah. and a dog called Jura, named <laughs> after whiskey, because Jabby... Uh, What's the name from, of the band? Well, uh, <laughs> well, depends who you ask. I don't know, <laughs> Jabby will be listening, but I uh, called it Chaviness. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, it was a lot of fun. So Tyree, man, it was just... I mean, firstly, thank you for all the Larks, for their hospitality and support, um, because they just have a great lifestyle. They have a cracking lifestyle. Terrible choice in movies, I'll say that as yeah. well. Terrible choice in movies. There was a movie about, um, uh, who's the, the famous director, movie director? I thought it was, it was it Scorsese. Is it, Scott, is, it about, is it Scorsese? I think no, there's a movie there? about him or something. Uh, Spielberg, there's, I don't know. Oh, and it's about Steven Spielberg, I think. Yeah, oh, it's, right. it's about his life, but essentially, it just basically tells the story of his mum and dad splitting up. And we sat and watched oh, those right. flowers, and it was shit. I thought you were going to say terrible choice in movies. They put on Amazon Prime about this kid called Ben Larg or something. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's a great movie. I would happily watch that again. Um, so, you know, yeah. I had a great time. We surfed every, multiple sessions a day. It was big, heavy, fast. Like, the first wave, actually, when me and Chabby paddled out, because it was actually quite an easy paddle out. It was breaking really close to the shore, with the exception of all the kelp that was just lying in wait. And we both paddled out and we're right beside each other. Literally no one else there. That was yeah. just me and him. No one else. Paddled out and we both were right beside each other. First sort of set came. And you know when you think, it's not necessarily about the size, but you don't think, you're not taking into account how punchy the wave is. Because yeah. you've not been on one yet. and You've not duck dive one yet. Yeah. I kind of went for just a mediocre duck dive. Like, not a lot of effort, but I was happy I was going to punch through. Yeah. So at that point, the board was removed from my hands, <laughs> right, un underwater. But then, and then I surface, and I looked to my right at Chabby, and because he's duck-dived at the same time, also no board. <laughs> I was like, ah, what happened to you? <laughs> but I was genuinely shocked, like, the punch in that wave, and that's full Atlantic swell, like, full yeah. energy coming in there. Uh, so it was great, mate. We had the drone out, um, surf, surf, barbecued. Just had a good time. Really so you've cool been, setup. Uh, you've been a lot of lot of surfing lately. Well, I mean, if you're watching me surf, you probably wouldn't think I had, but I've definitely been around the block a little bit recently. Oh, you've, you've been in the sea a lot lately. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've got wet a lot. <laughs> Whilst wearing a hood as well, yeah. I should say. Yeah, I mean, like we like we were saying, like when we were chatting beforehand about what we want to do, like show wise, and what we're going to do and stuff like that things coming up and things we got to talk about and we were saying um we want to do another like q you know like the q a episodes we did and we had a great that time a doing great those episode, yeah. they were so much fun and everyone really liked them but we want to do another one like that but maybe not a q a or maybe a q a on a specific subject or mm. maybe something like me and Leighton did one ages ago of like reading out your like um surf stories and stuff like that maybe do something yeah. like that or, you know, so, so any ideas, yeah, like send us your, an email, send us a message. In, your most embarrassing surf moment or your funniest surf story. Yeah. Something like super engaging. Like Leighton, I was chatting to Leighton the other day and he reminded me of, we went surfing with a load of people he used to work with 
and one of the guys there brought his girlfriend and uh, like they'd never been surfing before and i said to her she was like oh what you doing i was like right so you know a few little bits and pieces of what i knew at the time mm. and went right just make sure like because there's a few of us here try not to be if someone's like out for a bit further than you try not to be directly behind someone so when they get on the board and look up you're not in front of them and they're all like yeah yeah all right yeah fine which this is one of the things that like p- that pisses me off most of all about surfing in devon and cornwall is when you turn round or you're so you're sat looking out for a wave and you turn round and there's someone like three foot in front of you oh, directly totally, yeah, in front totally. of you and you're just like oh especially <laughs> when there's only two of you in the water yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it'd be like that. it'd be like walking next to me with a longboard and someone just hitting your board all the time with theirs, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, like Pete, yes, in Pete, it. Yeah. it would. But anyway, this girl's in the water, and I, I, I turned round, like go to put, like pat, take two, two strokes paddling into the wave, go to pop up, and she's right there. And my board hit her straight in the face, and oh, her no. bottom, her teeth went through her bottom lip, and like, Ooh. like came like literally broke straight through the bottom of her lip. Um, oh, man. Yeah, so that even reminded me about that. That's another reason not to go out directly behind anyone. I was very apologetic well, to her, but um, yeah. And then uh, another guy well, there. Came well, off his checking board. for damage on your board, <laughs> yeah, though. Yeah, checking the board. <laughs> I was. I think it was a rental at the time, so I, I, oh, wasn't, right, okay. I wasn't that bothered about it. Um, and then uh, within ten minutes of that same day, another guy there came off his board. It came back and knocked his teeth out. So yeah, it was a good day oh, all round. No. Yeah. Well, you know what you said something and they reminded me actually of something that happened on our first surf this morning and i won't name his name because he probably doesn't want me to um to mention him but rue from wave project scotland <laughs> that we had on, the, had on the show before give me give me an r give me a u give me a hand spell on the rest of it i don't know how to spell rue I can't even figure it out. I can't. But anyway, even, I looked at his name. I can't figure it out. It's something like oh, Rue. Yeah, it's, it's it's pretty mental. Um, so me and Rue, we got in pretty early this morning, or, or wasn't that early? I did try and wake up for a yawny, but <laughs> unsuccessful. And anyway, we got in right, and we must have been in for about I don't know three four hours. It was quite a long session, but it was super peaky, yeah. so you could never be in the right place at the right time. And Rue was out on his longboard. And it was at the end of the session, just before I came back in, and Rue had caught a wave in front of me, and he was paddling back out, and I was like, oh, man, how are you getting on? He's like, oh, man, I'm so fucked. He's like, I've got absolutely nothing left. And <laughs> I just sort of, you know, you know, you know when you know as well, don't you? You've got nothing in you, but you still go back out for another one. Yeah. And he sort of paddled off back to, he was sat quite far away from where I was, and he's paddling back, and I turned around after like a few minutes to see where he was at. And I saw a bit of a rogue set coming in, and I turned to see where Rue was and this thing, it was coming at him, right? And I could see it. He had, he just had nothing left for a turtle roll. I've so got nothing left. Li- yeah, I've got nothing left. <laughs> so he literally just jumped off the back of his board and he was clearly just about to ditch it, but push it out the way to safety. Yeah. And at that point, before he pushed it, he just happened to look behind him and exactly like you said, one guy there was the only other guy even close and he was right behind them so at that point Rue's now like between the wave the board sorry is between him and the wave yeah and he's unable to get on it to do a turtle roll and he got pummeled like i saw it in absolute slow motion as well <laughs> the whole sequence i was like no <laughs> and the guy that was behind them must have been like oh there, there goes my teeth <laughs> yeah oh man it, it made me smile <laughs> well, why do people do it why do they go directly behind no, like it's such big areas on beaches normally unless mm. you're on a point break and then you're in a queue you should be so you know or you know it's oh, it just makes no sense to me no, I, I've I've made that mistake myself actually as well, paddling out behind somebody and you think they might be competent, and then suddenly they ditch and you're like, "Oh, cheers for that! I've got nowhere to go." Yeah, the absolute yeah. worst. It's like that the thing, you know, worst. like like you said, that thing you point out of like with the longboard, you th- potentially you've got an eighteen. You say you've got a nine foot longboard, you've got an eighteen foot kill radius yeah, exactly, around yeah. you of you the board and the leash. So you know you've got to take exactly. that into a stay away, <laughs> stay, stay away. away. But and do you know yeah. what as well? Go on. Speaking about surfing, as we sort of spoke about Tyree, but a few days before that, we done a strike mission, a day mission to um, a spot on the west coast, which I won't name, but it'll be obvious to some people. Uh, yeah, and it was fantastic. a redemption. It was a redemption surf for me because as I believe 
uh, spoke about quite openly. I don't know uh, if you. I think you spoke about it on our buy me coffee one. Actually, I don't think oh, you spoke about it on the main podcast. Yeah, should of I what say happened. About it? You, Go on, say about it now. Um, all right, okay. You, you should give say, an advisory I'll, warning, first of all, for the, the content. <laughs> may, may contain blood and feces. <laughs> <laughs> Dead contain blood and feces. <laughs> and also, before I even tell this story, I'll, I'll spin this debt, as we would say in the army. I'll say, I told Pete about this literally minutes after it happened. And in his support and friendship manner, Pissed himself laughing at me. <laughs> you're right, mad so, people. Right, if you're driving, pull over because you might crash. <laughs> <laughs> so, as I've spoken about before... Wait, I'm going to have to mute myself because I'm just going to laugh too hard for it. <laughs> so, I've got Crohn's disease, right? So, for four months, Pete's lost it. I can see him on the film, he's lost it. So, I've got Crohn's disease, right? And generally, what happens for me, and it's different for everyone, is that for four months of the year and it's very consistent generally january to sort of april time i will pass blood up to 40 times a day and i can't control it and that's even just like passing wind it's just bleeding like a lot yeah. of it so to, just to just to, somebody with bowel disease makes me need to fart more and i can't fart without going to the toilet because there's blood everywhere and it's horrendous yeah. so it was kind of towards the back end. I call it a man period. It was towards the back end of my man period, right on this. It was a quite a bad flare up, and I yeah. needed to surf. Like it's been a brutal winter up here. It's been horrendous for surf, and I needed to surf, right? And this uh, spot over on the west coast, which is a very quiet spot, um, I knew it had surfed for like a week. <laughs> Yeah. Peace God. I've not even got ready. to that bit yet. Ready. <laughs> so I had remembered, so I saw there was four casts for a week, right, on Magic Seaweed, by the way. And right. I was like, right, do you know what? I'll, I, as long as I've got access to a toilet. But what I remember is in the car park that I stay in at the beach, which is in the middle of nowhere. Um, yeah. The last time I was there, there was a port a -loo. Yeah. There's port loose in the, in the car park. So I was like, right, cool. There's my saving grace. As long as I've got access to that toilet. And it comes on out of nowhere as well. So it's not like there's a consistency to it. I might not need the toilet for two hours, but then I might go seven times in a row, you know? So yeah. it's really difficult to predict. And I was like, ah, oh, there's definitely port loose there. There was last time. So I drive across, right? It's still like, it was when we had the solar flares. That's when it was with all the yeah. Northern lights kicking off yeah. Yeah. and the North lights. So I got there at like, I don't know, half 10 at night. And in the car park, was there port a -loose? What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> so I got there and I was like, oh, this is devastating. So I turned out I needed the toilet straight away, right? So essentially, you park in the car park at the bottom end of the hill. There's a little gate that takes you on the beach. You walk onto the beach straight down. If you look to the left, it's like a four or five mile long, beautiful, beautiful beach, right? To yeah. the right, it's if you go right, it's basically just behind the rocks and you can't really go any further. So yeah. I was like, right, that's cool for tonight. I'll go use the toilet behind the rocks, do the toilet there. And I'm not a big fan of doing that. I thought my days of, we call it shovel wreckies in the army, like yeah. shitting in public were over. Like outside, I mean, clearly not. So that's yeah. what I went for the night. And I thought, how am I going to control this? Like, And then I, I kind of realized in the daylight that it was secluded enough and I could bury it. And, you know, I wasn't worrying about dogs <laughs> pulling up toilet paper and stuff. Yeah. So that's what I was doing, right? And that was happening loads. And we get to, like, the Wednesday now. I think I went on a Sunday. We get to the Wednesday. And I'd been, I've gone and done that, like, 120 times by now, probably. And I was in the van, like, post-surf. I was in the van. And I was like, oh, think I need the toilet. <laughs> I can see Pete's face. I think I need the toilet. So and it like I say comes on out of nowhere. So I start walking down right, and I get through the gate, and it comes on str strong. I mean, strong's not even <laughs> like that doesn't do it any justice. It comes on strong. So I start running, and <laughs> it's basically <laughs> at the point where you turn right. Okay, there's like this grass area. It's where people tend to pitch their tents. And it sits a lot higher than the beach. So it's it's essentially a fucking podium, Pete. <laughs> it's basically, it's, it, it might as well be backlit with a draw curtain, some smoke <laughs> on it. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, tonight for your entertainment, it might as well have done that, right? <laughs> the car park, the entire beach and everybody in the lineup can see this podium from everywhere. So I get to that and I'm like, oh, man, I can't control it. So I start bleeding all over myself. So I literally drop my boardies or whatever I was wearing, 
and and to be fair, it was the deepest squat I think I've ever done. And I just started bleeding me all over this beach podium in front of everyone. And my my hands, my head was in my hands. Like I was mortified. I was sat there, right? I could I was while it was happening though, I was reading the headlines in the paper going like so, uh, surfers coming to these beaches and just having a shite on the floor. <laughs> like, I've got medical condition, right? Nobody even asked me. They've just saw this happening. Like, I don't think I look like a disrespectful dude. And I was like, I was mortified. And honestly, so I, I kind of went round the corner. I, I gave myself a baby wipe shower, got in my van. <laughs> went round the corner and cried. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. I, bu- I buried my trousers as well. <laughs> but I mean, I was mortified. So, and because it, it made me leave early, I went home two days early. I was genuinely devastated about that because it kind of, for me, Crohn's had won that yeah. time. You you won this round, Crohn's. <laughs> and to be fair, that was a solid win. Or actually, it wasn't a solid win. It was a bloody win. Yeah. <laughs> but, <laughs> I was gutted. So so this was my redemption, sir. So to go back, but, but do you know what? Actually, as well, I completely forgot about this. I don't think I told you, but I went back about two weeks ago uh, for yeah. one day. And what was in the car park? Portaloos. Fucking Portaloos were there. <laughs> Are you choking me? My flare-up's gone. I don't even need it. <laughs> I was deviled. I was absolutely deviled. But I was, man, I was I laughed. mortified. Don't... I laughed so hard when you told me that. It was so you, funny. You really it's did. Just, and it was just fair. the way, it's the way you described, I think you described it better the first time was like, basically, I just climbed onto a, a podium in front of a car park full of dog walkers and surfers and took a shit. <laughs> well, there was, there was no shit in it. It was just blood. Yeah, I know, but yeah, <laughs> just the way you described it, I just made me laugh. Oh, Do you know what the thing is as well? Like, that's the thing is, for me, that that's, there's nothing new in there, right? I have that has happened to me before. When I was firing the one o'clock gun at Edinburgh Castle, I, yeah. I'd done that. I remember doing that and I was having a flare up and as I was walking up the stairs, I bled all over myself and then I had to entertain like, Five thousand people or whatever that were stood at the castle and, and be happy. Like yeah. I was like, oh my god! But that was different because at that beach at that time, that was the, that was my surf time. That's me time, you know. And I was just, oh man, I was so devastated. I was not even not embarrassed because I'm not embarrassed about stuff like that. Like I wouldn't be talking about it now. But yeah. I was I was <laughs> mortified though. I was actually I would have removed my own blue tick. <laughs> 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 that day. Oh, man. So it was nice to get back, and I kind of, I think I made up for that for myself. So we've also like, uh, it's just, I don't even. There's, no, there's nothing I can say about that. All I can say about that is just moving on. <laughs> it's just moving on, <laughs> and like, yeah. like we've got, we've got episodes left coming out from Scotland. Uh, we've got um, efoil is coming out. We've got yeah, Jay's that's... Jay surfboards. We've got the uh, family. Else? You've got Crookshanks, we've got Sam Larg. We've got, we've got Surf Abel, uh, Surf Scotland Abel, Scotland. Well. Bill Edwards. Shackman, that was an emotional episode. Oh, I can't wait for that one. That was a tough one, actually. That, yeah, that was the first Bill's... time I heard Bill speak about it. Yeah. Uh, so that was that. Do you know what? As just witnessing it, it was quite an emotional. There's, there's, I think you said there's two points you nearly went, and I know there was one of them that I nearly went as well. So that, you know, that was, um, that's a good episode to look forward to. Um, and we've also got Shred Skate Park that we went to. That was fun, yeah. where we just both did and, ourselves in completely. Yeah, we did. And my favourite one of all of these that are coming out left still, it's got to be the one with Swanee, because it was completely Definitely. unexpected, and it was fucking brilliant. <laughs> it's just what, a, what was, what absolutely was amazing. It? And I don't know if we've already spoke about this, but what was great about it was that it was the, the last... Or the, was it the last day? I think it was either the last or second last yeah, day. Yeah, no, it was the last here. day. It was the last day. And he it was had the morning. messaged yeah. me that night going, man, who have you who have you been interviewing? And I told him, he's like, ah, I could do better than that. Get me on. <laughs> <laughs> and then you, you can be the judge for yourselves. It was fantastic. I genuinely, I think I said it during the thing when we were interviewing him, but I said, me and Pete could have left at any point and it would not have changed the conversation <laughs> yeah. it would still have been gold it's amazing <laughs> it was brilliant it's it was amazing. so good absolutely and if, amazing and if you're listening swanee uh, swanee's injured again he's oh, kind of man, gets yeah. over one injury and he, he landed we had an amazing day at st andrews not so long ago in fact we think we we all kind of agreed it might have been one of the best days any of us have ever seen on the east coast yeah. and the thing is 
the, the forecast was for the next day. It wasn't supposed to have turned up that night. And we all yeah. kind of went on a whim. Ended up with like five or six of us surfing. And oh my God, it was insane. It was almost like the wave gods had done an audit of yeah. the east coast of scotland for winter and went oh shit we've missed st andrews we've not gave them anything all winter <laughs> and they just hit send on everything you know <laughs> yeah and it was honestly it was perfect it was so good oh, uh, yeah swanny done his done his ribs on his last wave landed yeah. on his board it's a bit annoying nightmare an absolute nightmare um mm. Yeah, so well, that, you know that's what we've got left coming from Scotland. Also, you might have seen we'll have Leighton back on at some point. He has, he's been nominated. So all the shit he's been through, like with Effie and like life in general, stuff that's happened to him. Um, yeah. Some people, family and friends, nominated him for um, this trip, which he'll come on and speak on about on more details. Um, but basically, it's a chance to trek to um, across Jordan. I think it is the lost city of petra i want to say yeah which is, okay. if you don't know what that is that's the one in indiana jones when they go to uh that you know it's like cut into the rock face mm. um yeah but it'll be raising money for the charities that have helped them along the way as well yeah, so it's, yeah. it's gonna be um yeah it'll be epic he'll come back on and talk about that and um talk about what people can do to help out if they want to which would be amazing yeah. um yeah so that's, and he actually messaged me the other day. I tell you what, things must be in a better position because he messaged me the other day about going for a surf maybe at some point. Never. And he hasn't surfed for over a year now. So Man, that needs to be well documented. That will be well <laughs> Get documented. Get the pressure on. That will be <laughs> well documented. And uh, <laughs> yeah, speaking about that idiot as well, but, um, it was three years ago, this coming Tuesday, Wednesday, the 6th, that we started, well, the first episode of this podcast came out. No way. Yeah, so it'll be three years three. old to us. And how many episodes are we uh 85. We... This will be 85, 85, I think it is. Man. Well, it's more Shame than that because there's some bonus episodes in there, so it's probably near 100 or something. But it's, You should have it's... thought about it more at the time and tried to make the three-year point your 100th episode, but, you know, who am I to suggest? <sighs> <laughs> whatever but that's three years man I've, hey, God, I feel like we've I've, already got we, like... we've got the 100th episode planned and it's mm. turning out it's a fucking good one already I feel like I have had the discomfort of knowing you for three years already <laughs> 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 I nearly said the C-bomb then <laughs> <laughs> you won't say it will you you no, won't not, say it not let me tell that. you though he yeah. says it off of this all the time. Oh, off of it, yeah. <laughs> the only reason they said that at the beginning is there's a lot of people that really do not like that word and they'll just yeah, turn it off if if they hear it. So I just just say for Well, grow up. Yeah. Anyway, moving on. <laughs> um, uh, well, what else happened? Uh, what else happened? I tell you what happened. Magic seaweed happened. Or oh, didn't happen. magic your your magic seaweed video happened. Oh my god. If you haven't seen this, right, it's in the last 24 hours, it has gone viral. Um, go on to my Instagram, Scottish Surfer, and check out my pinned post. And I think it says on it, a tribute to Magic Seaweed. So if you don't know, um, Magic Seaweed is no more. It is, Surfline bought it out, or however that works, but it's, it's now gone. And Do you know what, right? The amount of people that, how publicized this was, the amount of people that have texted me, or messaged me saying, what's happened to Magic Seaweed? Oh, really? <laughs> it's like, come Have on. It. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So, sadly, it's gone. But when I realized it was going, I kind of had this concept for a, 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 a bit of content in my head. I don't want to give too much away of it. But it's just a really funny. And it's not me taking. Well, it's me taking the piss out of Magic Seaweed. But it's a bit of fun. bit of jest, you know. And I went and made and this. the accuracy of predictions. <laughs> that's very nice. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's exactly what it is, uh, whatever that means. But it's, 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 when I posted it, and I, I posted it in line with when they closed down, and actually we had a whole yeah. conversation about it, I was worried that, because um, I thought the idea was so good, I was worried that Raglan was going to make it. And then yeah. I thought, do you know what? Maybe I'll see if he wants to do like a collab with it and uh, we could do it together. And I thought, nah, it's too good an idea. But then I got worried and I was thinking, well, I can't release it too early, but then what if I leave it too late and he does it and it looks like I'm copying him or someone else does it and it goes viral. <laughs> so anyway, I done it, I went and filmed it and I posted it like maybe three or four days before they closed down. Yeah. And this is like, what, three weeks ago? 
Yeah. And it kind of just had the standard views I would expect to get, like six, seven thousand views, something like that. Yeah. And this is three weeks ago, and it's kind of just, you know, I've posted plenty since that. And yesterday, I don't know what's changed. Maybe my inherent whinge to meta and instagram <laughs> but something's changed and it's gone from six or seven thousand views to currently and this is only from yesterday morning it's currently on just short of sixty thousand views and surfline have started following me and sent me a dm earlier which i'm not going to say what it says but <laughs> i'm like what is going on and the best thing about it is is this and we've spoken quite a few times about some faith being restored in humanity and yeah. whether that being through the use of social media and like people donating money to us for special K's wig and yeah. for Leighton for baby Effie and stuff. But I am now, I've now gone back to my faith has now been, you know, just shattered <laughs> once again, <laughs> because what I will say within the post, it's obvious I've used the spot, which isn't the spot. There's a spot I use on Magic Seaweed, which isn't the spot I go to. And if you watch it, it will make sense. But this part of the gag, it should be fucking obvious to anyone. But the amount of people have gone, uh, well, let, let, let me just pull your post apart here. If you had used this spot in Scotland, which you actually went to, and not this one in Australia, oh my God, shut the fuck up. It's clearly obvious. It's <laughs> obvious that that's the joke. And I'm just like... <laughs> Oh man, what is wrong with humans? You can't have a joke <laughs> on the internet. You can't, but yeah. hey, it's getting me some views, so <laughs> I'm uh, pretty stoked. Do you know what else we and the thing talk? is with Surfline, we, we should, before we finish that off, is that I keep finding myself though still logging or opening the app of Magic Seaweed to see what the forecast is. And then I'm like, ah, damn. Even though it's still fair, kind of, you can kind of use it still. Or you you could, do you know what you could do? Just mm. delete the Magic Seaweed app. Well, no, but here's the thing: like to go learn the new, because it, you you can. Here's the thing: my phone screen would look the same. <laughs> well, well, there's that, right? But also, it's that thing. It's the exact same thing, right? With the user interfaces between the apps. Firstly, Magic Seaweed had a great user interface. Yeah. If you were somebody that didn't really know forecasting that well, just started surfing, I think you could pick up Magic Seaweed and roughly work out what's what. And yeah. I've not managed to do with that with some of the other ones I've used. But it's a bit like, it's this thing, you know, when we've spoke about it before, like I would know what, and my, my different groups of friend, I friends, I would know a friend, I would know what they all mean by a three foot wave. Friend. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. So I would know if Roger was saying three foot, he means head high. Yeah. I would know if other people, I don't know if Swanee was saying three foot, he would mean an actual imperial measurement he would yeah. physically mean three foot. He would right? be in the, in the sea with a tape measure showing you a picture. Yeah, totally. <laughs> so you kind of get to know, don't you, who, yeah. through your friends, what they mean when they say three foot. And it's a bit like that with the, with the forecasting on these apps. You yeah. would know. So even though I'm, I'm, you know, I'm taking a piss about a magic seaweed, I would know at certain spots through my own experience, if it said this, X, Z, and Y, I would know what it actually meant. Yeah. And to have to go and learn that again on other platforms, it's almost quite frustrating like i've yeah. i've actually been struggling even just to find the spots i'm like i open surfline at the minute and i'm like where's the bit to add spots and know, then i'm if, like did you have you got have you spots? got um have you got an account on magic seaweed what do you mean what an, did you have yeah, an, got, so if you had an account on magic seaweed it would just transfer over to surfline you uh, log my, in my, I did, yeah but my spots didn't transfer across well it's probably just don't like you then send them a message Maybe. they dm you now anyway so send them a <laughs> message yeah bezels yeah, but, you know, you I, I, I'm just gonna have to, just I, have to learn, aren't I? I just, I love the what you were saying then—the difference of people you're talking to. Like, you hear someone say, "Like, yeah, it was double over red," and you think, "Like, yeah, when you were laying on the board, it was double over red, but when you stood yeah. up, it was at your knees." <laughs> you know, I heard that. It's, like... it's, it's why I only use a body reference because it just yeah. takes away all that ambiguity. But also, because Roger does this, Roger seemingly refuses to uh, give me a, a body height. You know, he yeah. will just call it in foot. And I'm like, I, I, your feet don't marry up to feet. So just tell me in body height. So we, we, me and him went, it was me and him that went to this spot and nearly said it um, from a redemption surf. And he was like, right, it's nipple high. <laughs> nipple high. That's a new one. <laughs> nipple high surf. <laughs> <laughs> Who's nipples? That's amazing. Yeah. Not cottons. That's like knee high. Yeah. <laughs> knee high. <laughs> oh, amazing we should talk magazines as well I, d I don't know if i can well we c i can talk about a magazine that turned up today 
Long Border okay, magazine. Talk about that one. Issue one mm. of Long Border magazine. Absolutely fantastic thing. And it's actually it's a magazine that's turned up and it's look it's looks more like a coffee table book and it's absolutely beautiful. Oh really? And what yeah. magazine is that, Peter? It's Long Border magazine. I just said it. Are you not listening oh, did you to me? I, swear, yeah. I switched off. When you start speaking, I start switching off. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when, you, when I start speaking, you go, this isn't about me. Hey, look what picture I just... Uh... <laughs> yeah. oh, you yeah. realise this is a, an audio version. Yeah, no, I just like, opened up to a nice picture oh, of Ben nice. Skinner. Oh, so... oh yeah. no way. Yeah, so Ben Skinner. That looks Skinner. really good. Hey, do you know, do you know also that, that picture of Ben Skinner would link into something else we've got to talk about as well. That was a really good... Uh, unintentional well, we'll, we'll, we'll do we'll do that no let's do that at the end unless you're saying right, this then. was the end no, um, the end. we're going to carry on talking for another hour and a half yet yeah? um uh, well to be fair the last episode was i think by far the longest one we've done we're yeah. not sure we did record that in two parts though and like then it's just shoving I guess together so. yeah I guess yeah. so. Well, it wasn't so, so much a shove. It was more of a crash. <laughs> so, yeah. Well, anyway, Long Border Magazine. You should check that out because that's a really nice magazine. It's really well put together and it's cracking looking. Um, there's some great articles in there and some and fantastic you know photography in there as well. You don't have to be a long boardist to look at it either. A long Anyone can look at it. <laughs> Anyone can Anyone look, at, can it. look yeah. at it. I'm going to check it out for sure. Yeah. You should check out Local Mag as well. You should definitely check out local mag. And yeah. then we should the next right issue on. of you should check out the next issue of local mag. Anyway, why? Because I you, Mitch don't know what he's allowed to say, but he might make an appearance in it. That you should just leave or, it as or, that. Or might not. Or, or, or might not. not. <laughs> might not. They might just uh, bump you. I would bump you if I was you. Totally. It wouldn't be the first time that's happened to me. Somebody promised <laughs> me like some epic spread in a magazine, then chin me off. Anyway, yeah. moving yeah. on. Do you know what I want uh, to talk about? No. no. Gabriel Medina. Okay. What's he done to you? Well, nothing. Um, I think he's an absolute legend. And a lot I think there'll be people that just don't like Gabe. Um, Gabe, as if he's my mate. <laughs> <laughs> there'll be a lot of people that just don't like him. And I think people just don't like really successful people. Um yeah. it, but the thing is with Gabriel Medina, he actually gives he gives a lot back to the community where he comes from and charities and stuff as well. And he's actually, despite his gangsterness and how he comes across. I think Gabriel Medina is actually a really humble dude. Um, he's just very competitive and uses yeah. every angle in the water to do better, which I don't yeah. see anything wrong with that. But people will disagree, and that's cool. But So, as always, I've not finished the uh, Surf Ranch event, the CT yeah. event, which is, which is finished. But I'm kind of I'm halfway through. So I'm, a, I'm aware there was a, a judging issue or an issue with judging on his part yeah. Um, and I believe what's gone down is that he feels he's been underscored and he's publicly, I don't know if he's slated the judges, but he's obviously said something publicly and the WSL don't like that because they don't think it's a surfer's place to slate anyone in public. But I agree that because I think some of the judges got received death threats and all sorts, which is just ridiculous. That's too yeah. much bell ends on the internet. That, that's, that's completely wrong. But I think, especially at that level of sport, these surfers are the voice of the sport yeah. so i think it's 100 percent right that they should be able to 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 speak about any issue professionally they think is is not right and yeah. i think i agree that the brazilians have been underscored in the last few years on certain events and the thing is when you have a competition and you know and kelly's wave pool the kinds of waves perfect it's the same it comes up in an order so they all know how the wave's going to go so they know what the sections are going to do yeah i know the wind affects it a little bit differently on each wave but it kind of makes the judging so much more important because it's yeah. about every single aspect technical aspect of how they surf that wave yeah so when people when judges i'm i'm not saying that's what they're saying but if if medina busts out an air and covers 20 foot from the point he takes off to the point he lands and people are like yeah i know but it's medina or it's it's italo they can do that 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 shouldn't make it yeah. any less impressive in terms of the yeah. score just because they do it all the time in fact the, the fact they make it look so easy should tell you how hard it is you yeah. know so this has all happened I, I, i'm curious I've, like i say i've not seen what medina said i've not got to that point but i'm i'd love to hear people's thoughts on that so message the show and let us know um should people have a message, voice at that level me, of sport? Um, 
message Mitch and let him know because I don't care. Um, <laughs> I can see it on your face. <laughs> I can actually see you yawning. I literally, <laughs> literally have crap. no interest in the WSL whatsoever. I just literally no, have no interest in it. But, and that, that's you know. like I've said before, and like people said, like about this podcast like don't normally talk about it you, you like it so you'll you know mm. you can cover the people that do do like it people like me that aren't interested in it just do what i just did and just switch off while he was talking <laughs> i had no idea what you just said not a clue fair enough yeah fair enough do unto others and all that um yeah so well speaking of wsl competition ness and stuff like that that would oh, give yeah. us a good place to uh go to there then the competition for the ben skinner longboardist finished <laughs> The, the, long, the finest longboardist finished. So, as you probably know, we have hooked up with FCS, thanks to Brad Rochefort from Surf Hardware UK. Um, and we've been doing some giveaways. And this yes. current giveaway is a set of Skin Dog signature fins, which are part of the FCS Shaper series. These are the lightest fins on the market. Air core construction, um, two plus one setup. And that's what we're giving away. Um, so, we are going to close the competition right now and announce the winner midweek this week yeah. if you're yeah. listening so, so watch out so on... we'll close the competition actually we'll close the competition tonight uh, when this comes out at so mm. it'll be sunday evening yes at midnight anything after that will not be counted but still may be charged <laughs> um, <laughs> anything, entries after that won't be counted so 12 o'clock sunday night we will close the competition we'll pick the winner and that will be announced on wednesday on our social medias and then if we remember we will announce it on the next podcast episode as well but we may have forgotten mm. by then but uh yeah we'll try and remember because we are going to have a week a off sabbatical well yeah a week yeah. Off, or an, an episode, episode off. off yeah so yeah which is two um, weeks which basically means We've got a lot of editing to do from Scotland left. We've got a lot of, well, I've got a lot of work, work, normal work, not fun podcast work that I've got to keep mm. up with and catch up on and just busy. So it's a week Super off busy. or an episode off and then we'll be back. So the next episode will come out on the second. So after this one, the 2nd of July will be the next episode. So Yes, look forward to that. Boom, month off. Does that mean I don't have to talk to you during that time, or do we still have to chat? going to have to, because we've still got loads of bloody editing to do, haven't we, to catch up with? <sighs> right, okay. Yeah, it's, uh, I apologise. Many people don't realise it does actually take quite a long time. Not so much yeah. audio, that's a doddle, but when you've got to do video, that's difficult. Like, I have to listen to Pete over... And over. And then when I find a little sound bite where I think, oh, I could add something really funky, I have to keep listening to that same bit of Pete going, hello, 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 hello. Do you know what? I was surprised by how many Scottish people, when I met them and went, all right, they went, oh, you didn't say hello. <laughs> it's like. I mean, I, I, I'm gutted when you don't. <laughs> yeah, well, that's, <laughs> that's, that's, that's how we know you. It's your catchphrase, isn't it? Uh, well, actually, that it, it, thing. you know what it was, first of all, I forgot about that. Yeah, I'll do that today again. Um, yeah, you know what it was, first of all, if you go back and listen, we're talking about three years old, the first episode. Hi, everybody. <laughs> oh, my God, that was, I found it by accident. It, I think we worked out. It took Pete three episodes to get to, hello. Hello. The second one was just, it was a half-arsed attempt. It was like the evolution of man sort of thing. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it was, it's all there, but... <laughs> it's it's not, not working in the right good. order yet. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, well, I think that's pretty much everything we've got to talk about. Don't forget, go over to Buy Me Coffee and support the show on there. Uh, give us a like and follow. Subscribe on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook. Um, also, book the way through our website, and you can find the episode information on our website. And if you put the wave through there, we'll get a nice little kickback from that booking and mm. uh, it helps support the show. And then don't forget, you've got that discount code for echosurf.co.uk of 10% off at the checkout. Use the code UKSurfShow2023 and then also Surface Wetsuits, 10% off at Surface Wetsuits, anything you order and use the discount code UKSurfShow23. That will get you 10% off at Surface Wetsuits who also do an eco wetsuit. Anything else you want to add? 
Yeah, I was I was waiting for you to finish, and because I, I had something, and you spoke for a lot longer. <laughs> I thought you it's the gonna... longest I've spoken on the whole episode. <laughs> <laughs> you absolutely threw me. I had something to give to people, and then I'm sorry, Pete ruined it. Yeah. Damn, no. what was I going to say? That's really irritating. Oh well, I yeah. guess it's gone. Yeah, I, I you know. guarantee we'll finish this, and I'll be like, "Oh god damn, that was it. It was winning lottery numbers or something." <laughs> oh wow! Well, if you got sorry. it, you got sorry, it. Peeps. That's sorry, all right. Peeps. Never mind. Well, you know, we've oh, rambled. That, yeah, I remembered. I remembered. No, no, we bye. Have spoken, <laughs> <laughs> we have uh, we've mentioned it before. Um, hopefully, in the back end of the summer, we're going to do our Wales edition. Oh uh, yeah, Wales. Trip. Wales edition. We've so had a nice like man already offer us somewhere to stay for the week in. Yes. Um, oh, what's it called? Well, don't, don't, well, don't say it yet. Don't say it yet. Okay. I'll just leave it at that. But what we would like to hear <laughs> in Wales, what we yeah. would like to hear from 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 you lot is who would you want us to speak to? Uh, give us some in guest Wales ideas or <laughs> in, in Wales. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, let us know. Let us know your thoughts. Um, who you want to hear from, or where, and stuff like that, or some funky ideas we could do. Whilst we're there, places to go. Places to visit, places to eat. <laughs> oh, always places to eat, not like McDonald's. Like Mitch. Mitch had a massive rant at me about you McDonald's. McDonald's. No, you had a massive rant about McDonald's straws before we started recording. <laughs> and I was literally like, you know what? The last time I went to McDonald's was with you in Edinburgh. Which everybody listening is literally just going, Pete, that is shit. <laughs> you, Pete's recording this in McDonald's now. <laughs> <laughs> it's on the app ordering. Yeah. Yeah, my but I'm quite right. I, I, you, you, you mentioned it, but I am quite right to be moaning about McDonald's straws. Because here's the thing about sustainability. It's great that, you know, stuff can be recycled and whatever else. But when it doesn't work, I had a McDonald's milkshake, strawberry milkshake yesterday in the blistering hot sun. And yeah. that straw immediately turned to soggy tissue. And I was like, and I ended up having to just like, not even eat it, like, but drink, like pour it into my gob hole. Yeah. Like, come on, that doesn't work. So Give why have you got Crohn's? <laughs> yeah, no, that's good for you. Because you live at McDonald's. Uh, also, <laughs> I should mention... Strawberries. Oh, I don't think it's when we're over I there. Is it when we're over there or not? We might we might have to go to the Gower before because there's uh, rumours of a uh, Gower Shaper Maker meetup thing that's going to be loads of different boards and people and 10 different shapers going to be there and clothing brands, oh, nice. wetsuits, board repairs, and that's sometime okay. in September. So we might have to go to the Gower in September. Might actually work it. We might just do it in September, the, Gower, the mm. trip to Wales. Yeah, no, no. See definitely. how we work it. That sounds good, yeah. Yeah. Happy yeah. days. Yeah. Well, there you go. So I think, yeah, that's pretty much it. That's everything we've got to talk about for the minute. We'll see you. We'll miss a week and then we'll be back. So we'll see you in a month's time. And until the next time, Don't take care it. of yourselves. And, and remember, go other. check out that magic seaweed post on the Scottish Surfer Instagram account. Ha, ha, ha.